Welcome to Breaking Initiative. Guys, this is the first time we're shooting actually in person. This is a crammed set and we're like you know what we got time rob is over he's hanging out we're yeah. doing it now yeah, ba basically he uh stole me over from the super bowl party that we were at <laughs> and said look we haven't shot anything yet we we got to do something yes. uh and this is going to be way easier to edit totally so yeah. guys uh don't forget to like subscribe all the things we're on apple Podcasts, spotify if you have a you know social media of some sorts we're probably there most likely uh yeah my name is brett and i'm rob uh, this is a show where we break down our own tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your tabletop games uh you know we bring you news from around the community uh to talk about our what's new happening in the hobby and yes um well um we're kind of just winging this because you just told me we were literally i'm sitting there <laughs> watching the super bowl and you're like uh rob come up with a topic let's make it let's roll with it there's literally yes. some sort of hand motion yes. like that and um this is. I mean, no. This is all well scripted. Everything's scripted, guys. Oh, We're actually reading yeah. from a teleprom yeah. tour. Uh, so the fascinating thing about this is that Brett doesn't know what the topic is. I have no idea. Even more fascinating. Yeah. I don't know what the topic is. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, is this is a this is a channel for right, D and D. Right, right. yeah, yeah, it yeah. is for Dungeons Wait, and Dragons. This will probably be about Dungeons and Dragons. So Brett, most likely, I got a few topics I came up with while Bear I was me. sitting on the couch watching the Super Bowl. <gasps> We're doing a spitball episode. I love it. Like yes. a Spitfire. Yeah. yeah, yeah got yeah. it. Yeah. Go. Uh, all right. What if we do an episode on just some hot takes on certain um, homebrew things that we've heard? Um, no, that's dumb. That's uh, already been taken. Uh, but do you know what we could do that's what? never been taken? Uh, the brand new series of Critical Role. Uh, what do you think about oh, the this new series? Show. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, that is a slightly more original, only because that show just came out and nobody's done it. Like, and, like years of episodes of I've, talking about it yet. I've watched like five different people that review it. Yeah, I'm sure it's been done. <laughs> it has been done and I watch them all the time. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I don't go on the internet. I just right. make videos because Brett tells me to, and I, I just yes. So so this this uh, I've watched two episodes so far. Right. Um, you've probably watched more than me. I'm all so, caught up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got to get it tapped into the veins, man. I I love it actually. I I okay. So if you haven't watched any of our previous episodes. I have. We're watched, talking about the Legends of Vox Machina, by the way, guys. Yeah, the Legends of Vox Machina from Critical Role. Uh, I've not watched any Critical Role except for three episodes. Right. I watched the first two episodes of Campaign Two. Oh, okay. You're and, actually talking about the Campaign. I, and then, like, I'm, I'm giving my background for Critical Role. Right. And uh, and then the last episode of Critical Role. So of the the second the second campaign, oh, which just... all has nothing to do with this. <laughs> First campaign. Wait, but did you see any of the Vox episodes? Machina's. I've seen two episodes. That yeah. So also you two, saw two of the, the new first series. two episodes of Vox Machina. You get a really good yes. uh, vibe of how it is, animation style. What, right. what 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 are your? Give me some of your takes um, off the back. Okay, no so, spoilers. We're not gonna do any crazy spoilers. So uh, me and Brett were talking a little bit ago about uh, how they're making a new D and D movie. It was with me, him, and I think it was Casey, our friend. We were talking yes, about this, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I, I got this like stick in my side about this subject because like you can't do a Dungeons and Dragons movie; it's just going to be a, a really crappy Lord of the Rings ripoff, um, you know, because it's just fantasy. It's just it's the most generic fantasy if you break it down to just the story elements, with some unique things that they've beholders and some of the lore yeah. behind Drow and things like that. Very unique. Not enough to carry a movie, and they'll probably ignore all that stuff anyway if they made a movie. So what you need is the essence of what makes Dungeons & Dragons Dungeons & Dragons. Yes. Which is more about the the fun that everyone's having with their characters in the world that's almost playing at the fact that they are in a game yes. that is not taking itself too seriously in this serious story. And there's a balance right, that you have to do with all of that. Yeah. Of, of kind of having some of your Lord of, Lord of the Ring-esque right. tropes because, I mean, it's amazing and they actually both work off of each other, but then also kind of the breaking the fourth wall right. in like of what it is and what makes it what what it is and what actually right. I think makes it so great. And, br and bringing it back into this is that uh, 
I, I had all these things that I was saying, it basically summarized with, it would need to be a satire of Dungeons and Dragons right. in a show form, in a fantasy format, and uh, that would be the perfect D&D movie that they'll never make. And then I watch Vox Machina. As somebody who never watches Critical Role at all, I had no no expectations. Right. Three episodes of Campaign Three or two. It it was. I mean, it, it was everything I had talked about a, like a week before that with you guys, the, right. the two of you. Like, this is that perfect D and D movie I was talking about, right. but it's a show. It it doesn't totally dive into all the satire. It it has a it, lot of satire, but it also a, has a lot of really serious yes, stuff too. Yes. It's not like it's you know, a slathering of this sort of satire of these characters in this world right. and a ran, like just some random party of adventurers that are trying to solve this stuff. Like, why are they relying on them? Oh, it's because they don't care about these people. Like the people in charge, they're just sending them off to go right. whatever, yeah. fight a dragon or whatever because yeah. they're expendable. Right, 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 right. Oh, uh, so it 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 literally gets me giddy. It gets me happy. Yeah. Whenever it also makes me sad. I cry over things that are like, why am I even crying over? I literally have to go, like, why am I, why am I crying over this thing? Um, the you know what was really cool. My wife does not watch uh, or or play D and D. She's played a few times, and like she's like, I'm out. I'm not doing it anymore. She will watch this show, and she actually looks more forward to watching The Legends of Vox Machina more than The Book of Boba Fett. Like, we watch both, but she's like, I actually like Vox Machina more. And I'm like, what are you saying? This is amazing. Yeah. So I think there's something to it um, where it, it, if it keeps going, it... I think it can just it, it just helps it fills that niche in some or that that not that that itch not niche it fills that itch of like okay I got some D and D a little a little bit of the D and D vibes I also now want to play more so right. maybe it's like a really bad drug that once you do a little bit you then want a lot right yeah, that's a, but it's a good drug it's a good drug yeah yeah it's a good drug like you know like caffeine or heroin or something yeah. yeah. But not that. No, no, no. I didn't say that. That was I, for, for, for legal reasons. I have to say that heroin is not. It's not good. Actually, um, our podcast. I do always label it as explicit because it gives us the freedom. Because you never know what we're going to say, and I'm not going to edit all that stuff out. Frick yeah! <laughs> Frick yeah! <laughs> Ready to freaking do this? Are you? Where do you think they're going to go? Or do you think like whenever they do season? three or four because right yeah. now they have the first two seasons owned by amazon like they picked yeah. up another season do you think they're going to continue on campaign one of their arc or do you think do you think maybe after like five or four seasons they'll go into like campaign two because most and i was thinking about this most people got into watching critical role a lot of them has been there since the beginning I think they had a huge jump, though. I mean, a lot of people watch it, but I think they had a really big jump, and a lot of people that I meet and talk to, they're like, oh, yeah, no, I came in during campaign two right. because they don't want to start at the beginning because the beginning, they didn't start at level one. Campaign two is the first campaign where they start at level one from the beginning. Mm. And so I think yeah. a lot of people start at campaign two, so it would almost, I would almost feel gypped if, that, like, they only did four seasons or five seasons and it was all campaign one based. I was like, I like campaign one. I'm really glad they have it. Cool. I want to know about Jester and Ford. I want to see these visuals now to come in and I want these b things being tackled. I, they would be foolish not to just continue it into the next game but they, they would also be foolish to to uh, leave this on the table and not finish it all the way through the no campaign. no i think they finish it like so what they're doing they're 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 bunching everything together right so like the briarwood arc is i don't know if that's all season one but that's already almost done i mean we're we're through nine episodes um and then it, it's gonna like they they would do it all hmm. but it would they would mix other times and other things and they would kind of jumble it all to like make it all happen in i don't know maybe two maybe three seasons because they've already been doing that there's already been a few lines and stuff like that that like uh uh Piercy would say where it's like oh he, that actually wasn't at the exact same time when, in gameplay but they stole that from there because that would fit best for the show because they want to make the show as best as possible. Right. They've they've mixed characters together where they're, it's like, well, this had multiple different NPCs. But they all kind of just made them all just this one guy or this smaller group. They kind of 
Um, so they're they're making it fit for a cartoon and for a show um, to where it actually makes as mo- much sense as possible. So- they're cutting so so it's not quite like one to one. I don't know. It's not quite one to one. All right, but they're hitting like the important story beats for the main arc yeah, of the story. The, a lot of the interviews, they basically said, "Hey, we want to make sure that everybody got their highlight moment." Which they pretty, pretty much just asked every character, like, "Hey, what are your favorite parts?" And if we're covering over those, we'll make sure those get seen and anima- animated because that's part of the dream of like playing D anD D and then going, "Wait, this is now a." This, this is what happened when I rolled that natural 20. That's what that looks like. Exactly. Um, and then they're just making it all make sense. That's why, like, the fights are sometimes super fast. Right. I, obviously, D&D is actually the fights are super fast. I mean, I three, wish, three rounds is 24, you know, yeah, 18 seconds. But I wish that they were that fast, like, actually in <laughs> real know, life. I know. Uh, I know. They could just be resolved. I mean, that's why people get into LARPing, which is just... Right. Just Crushing start it. smashing each other with a bunch of pipes. <laughs> yeah, just got tired of rolling those dice and initiative. And then uh, yeah, uh, I do like a lot of the little Easter eggs that you'll find. Um, there, there's a lot of just actual D and D Easter eggs, like Some, like dice shaped things are showing up. I've noticed that actual yeah. people playing D and D is later on. I'm uh, not going to give I haven't any. Got that far yet? No, I'm, I won't even tell you because so it's still totally surprise right. you. But it's just really Wait, funny. one of those parties that died off in the beginning was called the Murder Hobos. Right, one of the yeah. yeah. The, so I, I love, love how part. they're 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 doing such a good balance of tackling right, right. both things. So um, yeah, and you got anything else talking about the episode? Um shows i i think that it's something we could definitely recommend for people that have never even seen critical role like people like yes. me that have just never gotten into it but, but love D. yeah um it's uh you it, i mean it's not something like you have to know the end jokes or anything that's what i was afraid of like i'm like right i have no idea what the hell they're talking about like uh, you know they're talking about some uh joke from the show or something like but no, it's got like a horny bard in it. It's like a classic, classic horny like, bard. That's what a good D and D TV show or movie needs is just a horny ass bard. Make sure that that happens, and then, uh, uh barbarian, I guess. I uh, know the horny bard is is the thing. I'm I'm super excited. I love Scanlan scenes, and yes. it, it's really funny. They're vulgar. They're yeah. pretty much like yeah, very graphic. But like Sam Regal, even whenever he just plays at the table, normally he's my favorite character. Yeah. Because so it was really funny how he came up with Scanlan. They were like, "What's the weakest person?" And then like his his Liam his friend. Whenever they first did this, they were like, "Uh, probably a gnome." And a, I was like, "Okay, well, what's like the I don't know the dumbest class? Is a bard? Is like done? I'll be a gnome bard. It was something like that." Yeah. And so he's like, oh, "That's what I'll play." And then he did the same thing for campaign two. I'm gonna be a goblin mother. That's what he was for campaign two. And then now campaign three, he's an empathetic robot, a robot who has empathy. He, he definitely is. He's that character from from like the campaign that just has to be the the very special, unique sort of standout character. It yes. seems. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he also plays it really well. Yeah, that's um, important. The challenge. Yeah. So, Rob. Yeah. Anything else about the Legends of Vox Machina? Anything no. you're you're looking forward to or diving into or? Um, interested in running more campaigns in that world now. That's what I do. I yeah. I mean I I was literally thought thinking about that as well where um I actually have the Wild Mount book. Right. And I even have the Taldori book where I'm like, "Oh, let me go ahead and create this whole world or let me create this one shot." And I'm like, "Wait a minute. If I already know like the 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 calamity and all these other things that happen in that cuz I listened to all of campaign 2, so I know a lot of the history. So whenever people roll history checks, I could be like, "I I already got to know. Right. So I actually kind of like, instead of me building a whole new world, I just go, I will tackle it off of that. And there, and, there, and it's cool because if there's something fun or fancy that I want to do, I would, I would kind of go, all right, well, what city or where would that be at? Where would that be in, um, in, um, 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 well, there's, yeah, in Tal'Dorei. No, uh, Alex, uh, Exandria. Mm-hmm. Where would it be in uh, Exandria? Uh, and then that's what I would, I would, I would do. And mo- mainly Wild Mount. Um, you know, so like something like high in technology, I'm like, I'll probably have them in Hupperduke, you know, if it's something that's, 
um, in the ice, whatever, I would be like, all right, I'll throw him an ISO cross or somewhere else. You know, that's way yeah. There. And me as a player, if I were to play in a campaign that was being DM'd by somebody who had a lot of knowledge about, it would just make me want to um, explore and research the things that my character would know about that world. And all those resources are available for yes. it. Uh, even as somebody who's never played, like I do that anyway for any campaign that's in an established setting. I'm like, all right, what would my character know? I'm going to learn those things and figure out the answers to those things. And everything else is going to come naturally to me as I discover things in the world because my character wouldn't know. And I, that's so convenient to not know things that are in the world when you don't know them yourself. So it works either way, really. So this is pretty much... The whole video here is just a thank you letter to Matt Mercer. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Right. And, and I mean, the whole entire team of, that they have is amazing. He he has it's lived the nerd dream of having his campaign transformed into a uh, a cartoon. And he show, fits the stereotype like full, with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, is that wrong to say? Yeah. Oh, and I love when I see him pop up. Like somebody that just yes. looks like him pop up somewhere he and does the and it's always lane. like it's usually like something like some humiliating role like somebody gets pissed on or something right, right. Yeah, yeah but he also is um cyrus from he it, it, oh you don't i haven't got that far yet i guess the third episode yeah, yeah. yeah he is the whatever so uh he he has his few key parts all right i think that's good for this episode i think so all right guys thank you for watching break an initiative yeah Pretty much at our makeshift yeah. quick studio that I threw up really quick, because why not? I got to sneak back over to that football party before my wife gets mad at me for staying too long over here to do a video with Brett. See you on the next one. See you when we see you.